Hey, what's up folks? This is Jean-Claude. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about some flex tools. Um, a number of months ago, I picked up the PXE80 from um, my friends there at detailedimage.com. By the way, let me go on and get this out of the way. This is not a sponsored video. I have purchased, as with all of my equipment, um, I purchased this equipment. Use their online portal, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I've been using Flex Tools for, I wanna say since about 2008, maybe, when I got my first Flex 3401. Got the Flex 3401, um, got my first employee back in about 2009, 2010. Got a second Flex 3401. I still have those Flex 3401s. Uh, they're still used. I love them. I love the forced, uh, the forced dual action. I think uh, they're very well-made machines. One of my questions has been, you know, how, how is a battery pack uh, or a cordless polisher, obviously using a battery pack, how will they handle the rigors of uh, everyday use, potentially everyday use, most of the day's use when we're open? Well, if seeing a second one of these here after a few months of having this one tells you anything, um, we literally got to the point where um, when my guys are polishing, everybody wants to use it for the smaller sections. And I have a number of DAs um, I have another smaller cordless DA that has the ability to do rotary as well as the, uh, well, the DA, um, the same as with the PXE 80. I want to say PXE 90. It is the PXE 80, yes. They have the quick connects. I don't know if you caught that. I'm not going to make this the review about the PXE 80, but you can't swap between a small throw, large throw, and a rotary quicker than with the PXE80, but I have something new now. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's another flex toy. And this is the XCE8, if I remember correctly. Um, yes, according to the sticker, XCE8. Does Germans want us to struggle? We're speaking the letters all together. Yeah. I know that's terrible. But I'm very excited about this because um, after using these uh, or the PXE 80 with the DA, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm not going to get rid of my corded machines. They're still going to be put to use. But I am thinking the way I'm going to go is, and it depends on how I like this machine. If I really like this one, then I'll get another one just like it. I'll probably get the uh, larger throw, non-forced uh, non action. DA that Flex makes, and I certainly need to add some, need to add at least one full-size rotary uh, cordless machine. My guys don't use rotary, but I do. I won't get into why, it's just how it is. And the nice thing about once you start buying, this is like, I don't know if you guys use any power tools at your home or for construction type work, but one of the biggest investments are gonna be your battery packs. It behooves you to figure out what brand you like much like with cameras. Actually, cameras with DSLRs, it's a great example. Whether you're using mirrorless or you're using the standard 
uh, mirrored DSLR. Commit to a mount type and try to buy your lenses based on what you anticipate, uh, what brand you hope you aim to stick with for a long time because batteries are very expensive uh, relative to the cost of um, what you're getting. I'm just going to set this over there. I'm going to take a look at the manual later. I already have one of these. It came with the PXE80. Now for my other PXE80, this is what I did. My PXE80, I got it from detailedimage.com and it came with two battery packs. Now these were the smaller of the size, the 2.5 amp hour uh, lithium ion batteries or Lion. Uh, let's see here. They go up to, I think it's 5 amp hour or 6, 5.5, 6, 6, 5, something along those lines, but they have three different amp hour battery packs. Um, what they do is that tells you, your amp hour tells you how, essentially in layman's terms, it's going to be the indicator for how long it's going to work uh, in the vacuum of having the same voltage output for a battery. The, uh, as I was saying, with the PXE80, um, currently I'm not in a position where I need four of the small battery packs because these small battery packs are not going to play nice with their larger machines currently. Something I was hopeful for was that the large battery packs would play nice with this. Now I'm, I, I'm trying to see if it just mounts. It won't even mount. So you can't screw it up. And you know what? I said I have one. I wonder if it's the exact same charging unit. So this says this is a charger for 12 and 18 volt batteries. So my charger, let me grab it here. I'm going to make this very easy. I know that it works with the PXE batteries. It will secure, it will charge. Check it out, even not plugged in. It'll tell you the life that will be on the battery. It has to do its thing, which is kind of unnecessary because the great thing about, one of the nice things about the Flex battery packs, press the button, it tells you how much life it's got on it. From the factory, two bars, two bars. Yep, it works. So I do have two of these. Nice. I don't foresee me needing three. If I did, that would be great. That's good for business. If I need to buy more, that is good for business. I was hoping that these 18 volts would be interchangeable and work with the PXE80. Yes, it would make for a much larger profile, but it, I don't anticipate it would be cumbersome under most circumstances. But it does not, so it can't, and I won't. But, um, oh, I was saying, I'm going to jump back and forth a little bit. If you're new to my videos, get used to it. Um, it's just how my mind operates. I anticipate with the current battery life that we have on these, we're not polishing full cars with the PXE80s. They're used in situations where you want a small pad, small backing plate, you want a really small throw. This is the larger throw of the two DAs, uh, DA Quick Connects that they have. There's a big enough difference between the two that if you wanted to use one for like knocking down dust nibs, something like that, it's good. I wouldn't use the short throw for paint correction, unless you're in a very unique situation where you have a very small window of space to work on. And in that case, I would probably be using a small rotary, like a one inch rotary pad myself. But you'd use the large throw for doing paint correction. And then the rotary um, is really great from the factory. And I'm not gonna get deep into it. From the factory, they don't, uh, they have a pin 
that limits you from attaching a larger backing plate for the, to the rotary, but I have been told by a flex rep that it's not a problem to just pull that pin out and then you can connect any of your backing plates to the rotary. I haven't done that yet. I will do that. I just spoke with him late last week and I personally haven't had to use that. So the batteries do not work interchangeably from one machine to the other, but the larger batteries, the 18 volt, um, I am going ahead and committing to flex because in my experience, they have a track record for making incredible, machine, incredible machines. The only thing I've ever had to do with my 3401s is replace the brushes, which you can do yourself. It's not a complex task. Um, and swap out the, the power cord because the... What is that ticking noise? Sounds like somebody's hitting something outside. Sorry about that. Um, and I've had to swap the power cords. The power cords because it bends at the base. Like imagine a power cord coming out here. It flexes a lot here. And when I say replace the, the, um, the power cord, historically what, what I'm doing is taking it apart, unplugging it, cutting it off, making new connections and plugging it in. So it gets, you know, six inches shorter each time we do that. I've had no other problems. Love those machines. I uh, have not had to replace the forced action head, the, the gear driven head. I haven't had to replace, now the backing plate, that's a wear and tear item. I have had to replace the backing plate, but I have not had to replace any internal gearing on the 3401 uh, by itself. With the, what is this model number again? XCE8, I'm so bad with numbers off the top of my head. Yes, this is the XCE8. That was one thing that was really appealing to me was the gear driven head. That gives folks um, a lot of flexibility in terms of how aggressive you can get, how quickly you can work, um, compounds, polishes, pads, all the stuff that you use the machines for it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, of course, it's you're inching closer to uh, a machine that uh, a movement style which can also get you in trouble because it's gear driven it's not if you're pressing uh relatively speaking too hard on a true random orbital da it tends to just bog down and it stops and you're not generating friction not significant friction thus you're uh, going to be limited on how much heat you can generate without being grossly negligent in some way. With your gear driven DA, you could potentially put yourself into a spot where you uh, don't have fun. You cause damage. To date, hasn't happened to me, hasn't happened to my guys, but two, when you're not rushing through jobs, that makes things kind of nice. Now, offhand, uh, in terms of the weight of the machine, it's hard to say which one's heavier. Where the weight is placed is different though. That's probably what I'm feeling is different is it's got, let's see where the, I want to say it looks like about here is where there we go. All right, there we go. So it appears that where the black and the red meet, this is going to be where your 50-50 weight distribution falls. Very unscientific. You just saw what I did. But uh, that tells me what I need to know. With your 3401, uh, you don't have a ton of weight behind the trigger. This one has, it does have a different feel. That sounds good. All right, that's pretty neat. 
So they made this friendly to left-handers and right-handers that you have the speed adjustment on this side. And I guess if you're right-handed and you kind of get used to doing it this way, you could, but I think they intend to use it like so and like so. Me doing this left-handed makes me guess that I look like I'm when I throw a football left-handed. Have you ever done that or throw a baseball? And your offhand you look ridiculous. I look ridiculous. I can guarantee just about you look ridiculous too. So don't pick on me too bad that I look ridiculous as I'm with my left hand. Um, I'll tell you one thing I automatically do like more. And we'll see how this really plays out. And I'll do another video after I've used this for a while. This is going to be actually used on the ZR1 here. You can see yellow tape marks all over it. Those are the heavier spots that need some serious paint correction attention. And then where there's not those spots, it's gonna be just gloss enhancement. Um, but I'm gonna be using the XCE, yes, XCE8 on this car. So I'll have some quality feedback, but one of the things offhand that I kind of dig is, I don't know if you've noticed, but even right when I picked it up, I naturally, kind of created this, uh, what is that, a cantilever type action right here in the middle. And it's something to prop your arm against, which for the P, what is this, PXE80? I keep forgetting, yes, PXE80. I promise I do use these. This thing is beat up. Which one is it? Yes, this one. You can see I have been using it. This hasn't been used yet. This sucker does get used, I promise. I'm just, I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I'm awful with uh, acronyms and initials and letters. But there's nothing to do that with. So with this machine, it, it, it's almost like you're, really the best way to view it is it's a little more like a scalpel. You don't go in and you're not working big areas with this. If you are, you're being pretty inefficient or you're in a pinch and you need to use it because something else broke and you need to finish a job. But this is really more of a scalpel like tool and it is, it is great like that. I really do like the, uh, the digital means to uh, increase the speed. Now, one thing I'm not crazy about is I wish you could with it in an off position. I wish it had the ability for you to uh, change the speed and then it sets that speed as the default, default um, uh, speed setting for like, say, five seconds, 10 seconds. And then when you go to turn it on, you can worry about the double action to turn the machine to full speed. I don't, again, I don't want to make this about a review about the PXE80, but some of the differences between these two, and one that I really like about this, it's different, and I'll explain why, but the PXE80, it has this up and down action for the trigger, but if you want it to do, you can put it here, and that's how you can adjust the speed, and then you can lock it. But watch what happens when I turn it back off and it was on setting four. It automatically goes back to setting three. I'm sure that's a safety function, but I wish I could bypass it because when I have it set to whatever setting, I know it's what I want. It's not an accident. I don't accidentally ever turn a machine on or accidentally have it at the wrong speed. It's not touching the paint until it's where I want it to be. But two, if I wanted to, instead of turning it on and have it at speed three, let's say I wanted to turn it on and have it at speed one. Well, it turns on in speed one, that's good. Does it do it in two? It does it in two. It just won't do it in four. You can tell what speed I usually want to work this in. Speed four. I love an analog roller wheel for speeds. I really do. Because you can get right where you want like that. You can also do it in one motion. Done. Whatever it is. It's more fluid. I feel like it's a little more natural. Plus you have lock to lock 
so you know when you're at the highest speed because you can feel it lock. You know when you're at the lowest speed, you can feel it lock. You don't have to look at it. And with the PXE80, you as small as the machine, relatively small as the machine is, there's a little bit more room for your hands to get in trouble if you're not paying attention to what's happening with the head as well as the head on the car. Well, I say the head, but the oscillating head pad section against the car as well as your hand because it's a small, you know, it's a small form factor. And when it's going, if it's going full speed and you're having a hard time feeling where that the switches are and yes they they don't make them so subtle you can't feel them but you know if you're working on something where it really needs a hundred percent of your attention on the paint and you want your mind to be able to naturally find that other speed you're seeking that's where the analog switch roller wheel it's so much nicer um, same with car stereos. Not to go off on a tangent, but um, if you have a car stereo where you have to press a button to make the volume go up or down, and you don't have to press it like this every time. You can press it and hold it. But if you're driving, and let's say, I mean, most of us, if it's a modern car, you've got controls on your steering wheel, um, which is nice. But we're going to act like the steering wheel thing doesn't exist because there are plenty of cars that don't have controls on your steering wheel for audio. Isn't it so much nicer to grab an analog knob and just adjust it? You don't have to look for it because you're not trying to feel the, the, the volume buttons may feel identical to all the other buttons there. And if you're moving your hand two feet away from your body, uh, I know this is kind of like not the exact same thing, but it's the same principle in that it's nicer when you can just do something and it's, it's being done almost subconsciously. You don't do anything on a car without thinking about it, but when you're one with your machine, you don't have to think about it, finding that right speed. It's, it's just as natural as you don't have to think when you're breathing in. All right, I've, I've, I've taken in as much as I can. Now it's time to manually breathe out. Now you are thinking about your breathing, right? You know that joke, the whole, you're now breathing, you're thinking becomes a conscious matter instead of normally you just don't think about it and it, it can be the same with your switch that is one thing I like about that so I do and we'll see how it plays out I can already tell too I do wish it's had a little bit more grip at least thus far that's kind of that's kind of the vibe I get is I could use just another half inch more on that then again, if you're having to go up near an object, let's say under a mirror, well, you can still use the side unless there's something blocking the side. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Anyways, I uh, just wanted to share the video here. Sorry, my phone's ringing. I uh, just wanted to put together a brief video opening this thing up, my initial feedback on it. I'm going to be playing with it on the ZR1. Inevitably, I already know the PXE80 is going to get put to use. Um, I ordered the, the machine only. Again, I got it from the guys there at Detailed Image. Um, I got the machine only. I'm like, well, I got plenty of batteries. But something else that, that really my guys use a lot is the DA throw for this as well as the backing plate. So it didn't come, I mean, it's, they were true to word. It was machine only. Um, and so I do need to get the, uh, the longer throw DA attachment. I'm going to get a few more backing plates, but that's it because my guys don't use the, the rotary. Um, I will have one rotary setting, uh, one rotary quick connect that will suffice for me. And then, um, yeah, I'll have a couple of these set up so that when a few of us need to use the small uh, PXE80 with the DA, we'll have that available. 
And uh, hopefully I adore this machine. I really hope I do because it's, uh, man, nobody likes spaghetti messes. And you're setting up your lighting and you've got your cart, you've got extension cords to deal with. You have a different set of uh, work, uh, we'll, we'll call it workflow concerns, work possible workflow problems, hangups. Um, bottlenecks you have a different set with battery packs but based off of my experience with the pxe 80 as well as the other um the other machine that we've had which really has just sat since we got these um that's not to knock anybody else um that machine has been used a lot over the last three years or so um but these are these are our go-tos for a small, small, I'm, I'm making this as much about the PXC80, but at any rate, uh, I need to get some more of the Quick Connects backing place for the PXC80. And then um, we'll see what I think of the, uh, this one is the XCE8, ah, yeah. Um, and see what I, li I like about it. Hopefully I like it a lot. And I buy another one of these, another, of the uh the long throw true random orbital and uh snag up a rotary and then my plans are according to the rep at flex north america i spoke to uh by the en end of the year flex anticipates um selling their power drills and being able to take advantage of their battery packs um and so uh, again, you know, if at that point I've got either two, four, six, or eight of these batteries, I will gladly have a flex drill as well as some of their other uh, tools for use around the home. And uh, yeah, one other thing I found out the, uh, whoa, let's be careful there, but uh, this is showing as an 18 volt. There's another manufacturer that uh, has a cordless rotary. I can't remember if they have the, a DA or not. They don't have a mechanically a, um, a forced action DA, but they do have a rotary and they claim it's a tw 20 volt um, battery pack. Don't be fooled. That's 20 volts max. This is a 20 volt max as well. The difference is in the honesty in the marketing. The 20 volt max, what's happening is how lithium battery packs work, lithium batteries work period, whether it's in a car or a tool or some other contraption is, it, the, the, the voltage cannot go below a certain point. So they build in where the battery uh, always maintains at least, I believe it's a 1.2 volt charge at full charge your 18 volt pack should measure 20 volts and the second you plug it in and you turn it even just that little bit it automatically builds in that 1.2 volts and it takes it away from the the total uh, voltage that's supposed to be being read by the internal brain on the uh the machine itself machine slash battery they speak to each other and it ensures when the the machine thinks that the battery's dead it's not dead it's got a 1.2 volt charge because if it goes below that you're actually harming the life of the battery and you're increasing the chance of, of some type of catastrophic failure um, the same thing happens with that 20 volt battery claim Yes, peak 20 volts. Functionally though, it's in the 18 volts. The second it gets pulled. So that made me feel a little bit better too when I went with Flex knowing that they uh, even present things in a more practical way. Well, I'm gonna get on polishing this thing, turn this long-winded video off and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have fun with this thing and I'll make a video in the near future. Thanks for watching, see you around.